Okay, it's 8.30 on September something or other here. The 20th. 20th. 21st. 20th. 20th. <laughs> Friday. I got to buy that. What time zone? <laughs> Sunday in, in America. I'm calling a meeting to order. First order of business, I guess we'll salute the flag. Pledge allegiance Please to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first appointment is with the two weeks. It's about the French cemetery, or is it about a lot of other Good morning. It's a lot of other stuff. Good morning. It's about cemeteries. Uh, just a quick update on the French cemetery. I don't know if you're all aware of the damage that got done by the little storm we had a week after the work was finished. It's horrible. Um, we're trying not to get into a litigation or anything over who's responsible for that. So I have ongoing emails with uh, Matt King and. Um, his latest position is that it's an act of God that did it, and um, they will donate their time and their own equipment to fixing it, but they would ask that we would pay their subcontractor. And uh, he hasn't got a price on that yet. <coughs> I assume the subcontractor is going to bring in a piece of equipment to lift. Probably the crane. Well, it might be just a backhoe, because it's just yeah. the one post that needs to be lifted. I don't know. So um, I gave the whole pile of stuff to Diane to start an insurance okay. um, claim, but then then that started negotiating again. So I don't know if we should start the insurance claim anyway. Um, I, I guess like I was with the insurance claim. Yeah, if, if it's it, some it, time constraints on the insurance yeah. claim anyways. Get it in there, if we, if we don't need it, we don't need it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, if it comes down to litigation, it's the litigation between our insurance company and his insurance yeah. company. Yeah. And get us out of the, out of the mess. Right. And either way, we have a thousand dollar, well, we have a thousand dollar deductible on the town's policy. I don't know if they fight with his policy, if they get that thousand dollars, I don't, yeah. I think that I think that's the logical plan is to go forward with the insurance plan. Yeah. And what all yeah. was the damage that, that happened? Uh, I didn't bring the pictures today, but the, the rain we had a freak rainstorm that just dumped a lot of rain real fast mm -hmm. in a short period of time. Uh, maybe what six hours? I can't do. Yeah. I can't believe the number. The storm just went through, I think it was to do with one of the hurricanes, maybe. Um, and it created a luge run on the side of the road, the side of 109A, and washed out all the fill they had put in, and created a, like a vortex or something right in front of that corner the post, corner the scene. lower corner post, mm -hmm. and it fell over. Fell, I mean, and it's, it's 14 inches square and five, six feet tall, so yeah. it's a heavy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very depressing. Because <laughs> it, was, it was so nicely prepared. Um, okay, so we're, our cemetery committee is struggling with how to handle our budget. We have been out doing inventory of all the old cemeteries again. Um, Mark needs to know where they are so he can take care of them, for number one. But the, the work that needs to be done in these cemeteries is unbelievable. Uh, we found this, this big stone up at Camp Sentinel in the Grant Cemetery. Turns out it fell over and broke last winter. Again, obviously it had been broken before. Uh, and they just epoxied it and stood mm -hmm. it up again, which isn't really the right way, but 
the whole base is broken. It's like three or four pieces. It needs to be reset. We need a whole new concrete base for it. <coughs> it's leaning badly. It probably won't stand up. We've got to go out and try to brace it, to hold it up for the winter until we get somebody in there. We've got Fields Jones Cemetery, the fence, and then we have um, a tree break. It's just, it's still like that. It's still hanging. That and which side is that the same cemetery? Yeah, that's Fields Jones. Um, we finally got in to look at the Dame Cemetery. And um, you can see the walls all need to be rebuilt. And you might also notice a few trees. I mean, every single old cemetery has got tree problems. And you can't just get a chainsaw in there and knock them out. You need equipment. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it just, this, this is a horrible one. This is Captain Smith down off McDuffie Road. Look at that tree. Yeah. It's like a third of the shell of the tree is standing. And it's got a branch that's this big around right out over the six stones that are there. Okay. There's no way for it to go, but mm -hmm. right on the stones. Right. Yep. And uh, nobody can climb that. No. You've got to have a big crane that can go in and pick it up and pull it out, but how the heck do you get it down off McDuffie Road to get that? So, it, you know, this is uh, your cemetery, Chip, Mount Pleasant. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, but those trees are all going to come down yeah, at some point. Mm -hmm. It's like $10,000 a day to get the right equipment. Mm -hmm. it, you know, I don't know how you even get it to that, but... Well, it's kind of an off-road crowd. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we have over 50 cemeteries, all, all with issues, and a day apiece with a big piece of equipment is $10,000 if you really come right down to it. And if, it's, if the equipment only takes seven, then you could spend the other three on repairing stones, resetting them, putting them upright, and so forth. So. You know, where do we go? Yeah, where do we go from here with these things? Um, well, I would think that if you catalog it and come up with some sort of long-term plan, I mean, I don't know any other way around it. We're not going to... I'd do it all in one year. Yeah, I don't think... No, you, you couldn't do it all in one year, even if you had the money to do it. Even if you had the equipment, right. there aren't that many days. Yeah, I think you're right. <clears throat> identify and, and you've got a good start here just uh, try to things. prioritize but it, it, even right. if you do one a year that's 50 years well <laughs> it's like right. well um, so anyway we're thinking we're going to be asking for um, 10,000 a year increase to our budget mm -hmm. um, and I think the other thing we really should consider is a warrant article to allow us to put any unexpended funds into our expendable trust. I mean, it's it's a big jump for this category, but mm -hmm. it's not big. Now, your expendable trust is for private donations, right? For anything. We have two. Okay. We have yeah. two. One, one is the um, sale of plots. Mm -hmm that we can expend the money. The other one is uh, for private. Or right. I, I don't believe there's any restriction against public money going in there. There is. There is. Trust funds can't commingle they can't tax commingle. dollars okay. and, and private donations. Okay. So, so we can set so, up a new yeah, yeah. So if, if we want to have something where we take leftover budget money and put it into a, a, a trust, uh, it's got to be, a, it has to be something that's specifically 
deals with tax money. Can you use the strategy that uh, um, if you're under contract with a tree company, that you can set those, we can vote to uh, well, well, we can encumber funds, but that's a... Leftover money, that's, money that's, that's left in the budget, we could encumber with a contract. Right. But just, just, a, just a possible just strategy. And have we, has the trustees talked anything about grandmother, Alcha, Fernandez, historical? We haven't. We've been just been talking that we have to do some kind of fundraising. Yeah. To get the public more involved. In, uh, well, another approach to look at with respect to this maintenance is to specifically set up a reserve fund. Uh, and uh, then uh, put money in that every year that you can then <coughs> use as you're not restricted to a specific annual cycle to use it. Right, because some yeah. cemetery will be more than others or less than right. others or whatever. Right. right. So, um, you know, and separate from this, your regular budget, which is the annual mowing and those kinds of things, something that's separate from that, that's a... Uh, right, and you may want to, I mean, I don't know what your plan's going to be on this. You and I aren't going to live long enough to see the end of it. But, I mean, you want to, may want to accumulate money for one cemetery. Right. Like spend money. Well, or, or money. several cemeteries in the same area. <coughs> You know, if you're going to get the crane down into Canaan Valley, there's three cemeteries down there. Maybe, maybe you need to look at all of them at the same time for a cost saving. And so you prioritize this and ahead of stone repair, or would you do them simultaneously? Or? I mean, I can't see. We've been doing um, 750 a year for stone repair, which gets us. Uh, three or four or five stones mm -hmm. fixed that aren't really bad. Um, this year we used a thousand really fast and we could use another hit for another 500 probably for that one that I showed right. you the picture of. Right. So, you know, that needs to come up a little bit because we're not <coughs> keeping up with the damage that's happening every year. So remind me, what is the cemetery's total budget for the year? Uh, 22,000, I think. 23,450. So you'd be looking to jump that up to like 30, 30 or 35? Yeah. Okay. And you feel, I mean, I think we're, I'm at least, in favor. I mean, we have this a responsibility to have. <clears throat> I think we can probably convince the board of select when that, that's a good thing to do. But then we got to defend it with the budget committee. So right. You'll have to. And should this go on CIP? Is that? I don't know. We had discussions about that, but it's not something that. It's something we should be doing constantly. It's, it's not, not an improvement plan. I don't know. It's a maintenance. It's a maintenance thing, a repair and maintenance. It's not a new project. So it's not something we should wait 10 years to address with a one-shot deal. You know, I, so I don't know. We had some conversations, but we didn't think it quite fit. <coughs> Excuse me. When you mentioned Field Cemetery, this triggers a project I was working on with our road agent. I'll give you a little background. There's several towns that uh, hire companies that have all the equipment for tree removal and it kind of bleeds over into helping other towns and the first thing, or other projects. And I went through about what they expected to do. Then the last thing is consider um, services needed by other town departments. Example, chipping up brush at the transfer station and tree removal that are nearby the road, like the field cemetery. So I think there's a way, in yeah, my mind, that, that maybe, maybe that tree should come out of the highway budget. 
Well, you know, it's all the it's all it's the right town. There on the side <laughs> of the <laughs> it's all the town budget, and you know, this is just the preliminary stages, and we were going to talk about it probably today. But <coughs> where, where is the cemetery? The one on Sodom Road. Sodom Road. Oh, okay. By Smiths. It's okay. a it's pine tree. It's right at the uh, top of the hill there, as you go around the corner. It's yep. So, is there any other big trees next to that one that's going to come down, or the one? Um, no, could. There's two trees there that could come down. There's a couple on the bank that might come down if you... Well, the only reason I'm saying this is I work with a handful of tree companies around the area, and I've seen them go up a tree that's safe, go up to the top, and then they bring a rope down, they swing over to the other one, they tie it up, oh, ties in. and they, <laughs> yeah. they can send it. I've even seen them pull, like they put a, like a, cle a leader thing where they pull a rope, and they'll cut a limb and it will slide down right out of the cemetery where they can send a limb and they cut it piece by piece yep. mm -hmm. and they'll just send little pieces it'll slide down a rope on a uh, I don't want to call it like a shackle it is chips. pretty amazing what they do and <laughs> these guys are all local I yeah. watched Lovering really do good. that at the yeah. cemetery up at really the, uh, on 171 up at Tufton Bro Corner they were yeah. pretty clever on their rope work yeah he's one of the best for yeah. sure if you wouldn't mind Looking into some whatever grant might, might be out there, mm -hmm. um, I think that'd be helpful because if we could supplement whatever money we can raise in the budget with grant money, I think it might sweeten the pot a little bit. I maybe mean, get a 25 year project as opposed to a 50 year project. Yeah. We might do it for that. I think. There you go. And I had asked uh, Sue to dig into her amazing memory yes. and help us out with this 19 mile day, Pierre, the Union War mm -hmm. yeah. issue. So she yeah. hasn't done anything no. now, but, you know, yeah. it's not like I promised a pair. <laughs> <laughs> if there's something out there, you'll find it. Yeah. Well, and that's a compliment. Well, no, we know well. it's been there a long time, the war. How long? I have no idea. Oh, uh, the well, fact the that the state thing is has the lake level has changed a yeah. lot. Yeah, oh, sure it has. Yes, but um, was it there before they put the dam in at Lakeport? Probably not. Well, the dam was the dam wasn't as high as it is. Right, they raised the well, level. It was, yeah, it was like 1880 <coughs> something when they raised the it. Right. Raised it. Yeah. No, it has been in. The, the dams along the river there, uh, it's unbelievable how long they've been there. Like the first settlers right. in the state right. started putting dams, and there was a whole series. Uh, and way back I'm sure the water power years. is what allowed you to do stuff. Yeah, yeah, especially then. So, uh, But the Lakeport Dam, didn't that go up? That went in sometime in the late 19th century. No, it was there much earlier. Was it? It was much earlier, but they kept raising it, making it bigger. And in the 1860s, the Winnipesaukee Lake Cotton and Woolen Manufacturing Company bought flowage rights from every property around Winnipesaukee and the tributaries coming into Winnipesaukee um, so that they could raise it again and again, and they just kept raising it. There's a ton of lawsuits in the 1860s and 70s that people claiming they raised it more than they were supposed to, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you for your efforts. Thank you, sorry to take too nope. much time. And while we're in talking mode, um, how much you think we're going to talk about? Our library <laughs> trustee is coming to talk to us about something, I don't know what, but before we get to Jim, can we get to Gordon? Sure. All right. We have a situation uh, with money, so it always comes down to money. <coughs> Think back what makes it. <coughs> January 4th meeting, we met, we discussed uh, Doing the plans and dams, I'm not happy to help. Your voice was working fine until you had to talk, right? Yeah. yeah. No, getting getting the work done to advance. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
We figured out $130,000. We agreed to go and split it half, 67.5 for each one of us. How did you intend on funding that? Uh, uh, yeah, we should fund it. Okay. We have reached the point now where we, uh, we are approaching the end of the capital reserve fund. The trustees of the trust funds have said, uh, oh, thank you, have said that they only want to release the money that the dollar amount that was approved at town meeting out of the trust fund. So consequently, when we pay our bills this last time, we had to write a check for $817 and change to make up that payment for the uh, month of August. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but we didn't have the money. There's still $68,000 in that trust fund. I'm trying to figure out how we're going to get it out of there. Right. They don't want to release it. <clears throat> well, we have authority to expand. Well, thank you. Because, you know, I went so, back to the, to the meeting. But I get, my question is, did we ever, in addition to what was in the article on the warrant, did we ever spend that, whatever it was, yeah. for the architect's fee? Yeah. Because that was separate. That was before exactly. it went to town meeting. Exactly. That was mm -hmm. under our authority. Mm -hmm. uh, so if that, if that hasn't come out yet, then... It's By the time the bills start rolling in, we paid one or two of the first ones because that was actually before town meeting. Mm -hmm. And we said, we can do that, and then we'll wait until uh, after town meeting to have the town they kick in. But if you have the authority to expend, then how can the, the trustee and the trust fund not release the money? Well, we haven't planned it on yet. So I think <coughs> I, they they have the responsibility to ensure that money that's expended out of trust funds is done in accordance with the law, okay, including you know restrictions on its use. So um, they they may even though we're agents to expend, look at be looking at what was authorized at town meeting as total but the expenditure for the architectural fee the, uh, was before it went to town meeting mm -hmm. I mean, the money may have come out after town meeting but that was a separate transaction from what went on the warrant well as I'm saying the bought you know this is I, I can't go to them and say you know release the money that's not the purview of the trustees mm -hmm. in the library however Sixty-eight thousand dollars is still in the account, and I don't know how how else we're going to pry it out of that account, and so that we can. Because once that's gone, then we'll start kicking in with all of our money, and then of course we'll end up with the balance uh, through taxes. So it's sixty-eight thousand. Hmm. Sixty-eight thousand. Yeah. Well, we we have encumbered. You have encumbered sixty-seven thousand five hundred. There's been some interest, so it's about sixty-eight thousand dollars. So if we were able to encumber it. We have to be able to expand it. Well, so I guess we, we, we didn't. Yeah, yeah, we didn't encumber it. It's a trust fund. We author we authorized the expenditure of, of, for this. I know we ran into a problem with one of the Warren articles from the library, where we couldn't spend money out of it. Because the, of the reason being was that the Warren, the original Warren article, written in two thousand and ten or twelve. And it was for a new library, for a not new library. for an addition. Right. But if you go back to not this past town meeting, but the meeting before it, one, the one we had to postpone the vote because of the the, the uh, bond hearing issue, the, what, we changed we changed the wording in the capital reserve fund for an addition, and it has with selectman like having the authorization to expand. So, okay. Can I interject something? The trustees of the trust funds will go strictly by the warrant articles mm -hmm. that establish the money in the fund. So the, I don't know. I don't know the details on this one, but if that was there earlier, I would guess they're looking at an earlier warrant before that, where it may have started. Well, they're looking at the so, they're looking at the warrant that passed. Last town meeting, which was for three hundred and 
350,000, $355,500 out of the trust fund, which had in excess of $400,000 in it, because we had already agreed to go you know, half and half on the architectural fees. Right. But if you, didn't, if you didn't do anything to request any money from them before town meeting, I don't know whether how we're going to be able to make this work. Well, it's, it's, it's apples and oranges, okay? The first piece, which is the architectural fee, was separate from what went on the warrant. That's right. And that decision was made in advance of town meeting. But if you were going to do it out of the trust funds, and then we requested money released from the trust funds, then is that going to be, is that the issue? Is that what we're going to have to deal with? It, it's, well, it's, it's separate from what was authorized on the article. So we just need to establish that we voted on expending money that we were unable to expend before, prior to the prior to time, mm -hmm. prior to the Warren article. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, Right. Well, as I said, this will, this will be the end of it because the next bill of the county will be is going to be far in excess of that, you know, sixty-eight thousand dollars. But we're making money on we're making money on our money as as, as the uh, as trustees of the library, and I don't I hate to give up that income stream. But we don't have yeah, that printing press cranked up real good. Huh? Yeah, it's doing okay. It's doing okay. It says they're happy. Yeah, I guess worst case scenario is it still comes out of, I mean, it, it's money to be expended for the mm -hmm. library project. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that gets confusing. But maybe the the warrant article for this year was 350000 355000 So maybe they're limiting their yeah, expense yeah, yeah, yeah. for the library to 355000 There's already money in the library. Funds mm -hmm. prior to this year. All right. Anything else? Well, then, so I can then tell my people that you're working on it. You certainly can. Thank you. That's all I need. We, we are working on it. Well, yeah, I, I, have a, I have a reoccurring nightmare so that that $68,000 is going to sit there. We're not going to be able to touch it until next town meeting and have another, have another uh, uh, article. Right. To release that sixty-eight thousand, which by that by then we'll have grown to X amount of money, to, you know, to pay the bills. Right. But you know, we're cranking away on this building, and you think it'll be done by next time? Yeah. <coughs> we've got to be close. It's you know, yeah. Yeah. of course when we're they're, fra when they're framing, it always looks like it goes up fast. Oh, at this yeah. stage. oh, oh we're done. Finishing for it seems exactly. to take forever. Exactly. Yeah. But you know, certainly ours is a much simpler project than others, <coughs> and. Uh, and we're, going, and we're going pretty quick. Yeah. So. Hey, that's a great way. Well, we want to get it done before the bad one. Yeah. Okay, then. So that's. Hopefully, I can report Thank back you, to you on the 24th when we meet in the library. Okay. All right. We'll try for that. Very good, though. Thank you. Um, okay. See you. Yeah. All right. Our next. Aaron Child is <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good. All right. Did you give us the road agent budget, Karen? He doesn't have his. No, that's not. I don't have my budget. Yeah, we he doesn't have it quite ready. Okay. Um, so we're waiting for some more numbers to come in. Okay. Uh, but I'll do the update for now and put it on a few things that were on the list that we were supposed to talk about today. Uh, first thing, um, there's been a request for a slow children playing sign on Butternut Lane and Brush Lane. And I talked to the chief about it and he's okay, but suggested I have to run it through you first and that you can okay it. Um, but we also talked that maybe just one sign would be adequate to put everything before it splits off in the birch line. Um, What's your recommendation? Uh, I, I think I think it's a needed sign for sure. Uh, there's definitely children up there. And the location. I think one just before it splits off should be the it's same effect. Specific to be worded. I mean, there are no slow children in Tuftonburg. We do make jokes about that. <laughs> Does um, it take a vote by this board? 
So we haven't had to do this before, so I'm a little bit new to that. But we, I thought we approved that at our last meeting. I thought we. Yeah, I put an email in your bill. Did you get that? They did approve it, but you're I asking did. about one. You're asking about just doing one, right? Okay. Well, okay. I'm asking about the whole thing because I wasn't oh, sure okay. it was approved. I, I didn't notice that. But. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I thought I put it in. Your okay. Next. Seems <clears throat> okay. like one sign. Okay. Let, let's so try it. Yeah, let's try one for you to do that maybe right. next year when we have no money in the budget for science. Is the low. <laughs> um, the wood chipper is up and going. Runs well. Is that a diesel or gas? That's diesel. Yep. Yeah. I'll speak on that later. Okay. And then uh, the not we Are you leaving the fun? <laughs> I gotta go research thank you. Oh, there you go. All right. <laughs> the knotweed is actually being sprayed today as we speak. Including the dump? Yes. Thank you. Yep. It seemed like you must have done the handheld patch at some point. I didn't see. We didn't touch it. No, it wasn't us. <laughs> A little less. Yeah, it seems like it's. It's gone down. Yeah, it has. Yep. And. Um, Let's see, I also have numbers for feeding that I got from uh, Frank Carroll. Mm -hmm. I have a copy for everybody. So we can review that. It's not. It is actually what I call the top section, uh -huh. which is on the uh, Ledge Hill end. From Ledge Hill into where we left off, basically, with the new pavement this year. Mm -hmm. And there's actually red listed culverts that we have that need to be changed. Um, I, you know. So I'm recommending that we, we pave. North line, we do a full, full depth reclamation on that. And if we all agree, I'd like to get that top section of Dane Road to continue on with that. Uh, so that's the 49,300 number? Correct. Okay. No, it won't be snowing, so. Uh. And shoulders. So, oh, so it's no, it's a 61, 61 9. 95 plus the 5400 for the shoulders. Okay. And that'll leave the 109 end. Correct. Not done. Correct. So that's another 4350 feet. So it's probably about the same amount of money. This is 4600 feet. So the surface on Northland 2021, let's push that out to 2021. So you're, you're looking for 132.6 plus 12.150. All right. So 145, 750. Okay, so we won't be doing that surface, but we have to do the shoulders. So there's the 32, uh, 132.600 plus. 12,150. And then if we do the Dean road section, we'll have another 49,300, oh, excuse me, 61,950 61, plus the 54. I have for Dame Road, to do it completely, $67,350. Is that what you have? 67,350. Okay, yep. for North Line Road, the entire project, everything that's in the parentheses, 241,570. No. What do you have? I've got 145,750, because the surface 
He's yep. doing How about 121? How about 144, 750? Yeah. Is it 144? I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyway, right. yeah, the surface is that's that's a top coat. That's the following year. The piece in the middle. The 132 or the no. 68? 68. 68. Okay. Yeah. So it's 212,100. Yep. Plus prep work. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're looking for two hundred twenty-five thousand. You said one seventy-three five seventy for uh, North Line Road. No. Um, one forty one forty-four seven fifty. Yeah, one forty-four seven. Right. I'll add it later. It's the twenty-eight <coughs> eight twenty, correct? The one thirty-two six hundred, correct? And the twelve one fifty, correct? Oh, you're at the right. I think we do have to add that. That we we didn't add. Yeah, that. that is correct. If I then add sixty eight thousand, I come up to two forty one five seventy. That is not a correct number. I think the top coat is a, is the next year. Which is the top coat? It says 2021, surface 2021, right here. Which is 68,000. 68,000. Okay. So if you add 28, 820, 240, 920. I came up with 230, 920. Really? My, my math is that far off. Have a look. Oh, wait a minute, no, I didn't carry the one, so you're right, 240, yep, 240, 240. yep. So that would be your paving more article? Well, plus we usually have about $50,000 for road construction. Because were we at 280 last year? 285. 285. And that's, I think, what I have proposed for mm -hmm. this year as well. Um, for CIP, which I thought we might want to do mm -hmm. right. as well. I have a problem. I reread the road study. We have 50 miles of road. Mm -hmm. Each road needs attention within five to eight years. And we're getting farther and farther behind. For example, look at Ledge Hill Road. Yeah, I mean, there's this top section that was. And to confuse the issue even more, can I take a moment and talk about Ledge Hill Road? Sure. Okay, Mr. Chairman? Sure. You insisted, and I think it was great, to regrind as much of Ledge Hill Road as we could, and we went all the way from Dane Road, from the school to the Dane Road, to Dane Road, right? Close to Dane Road, okay. not quite, but... Look at the road from there to Tuftonboro Corner. <clears throat> um, well, that was a section that was not was not ground line. Was just was just paved. Okay, right? the top section. Top section was just uh, paved. Just an overlay. Yeah. Which is in bad shape now. I, I. It's the second busiest road in town. There are at least 11 companies with 10 wheelers that are hauling out of Evans Pit, coming up Durgan Road, down Ledge Hill Road, and down Union Wharf Road. You own two of them. They haul 84,000 pounds of material at a time, don't they? Uh, a little less. The most well, you can haul is 70. Okay. Quiz. One big truck has approximately the same effect as how many cars? I don't know. I think, I think it's like 10,000 cars. 10, yeah, it's a lot. Now, follow my logic, please. That's math. I couldn't believe it myself, but it's been proven to me. If you had 10 wheeler hauling from Evans Pit to <coughs> Marriott, you're going to make about six or seven trips a, a day, correct? A little less, probably six. Okay. At most. Right. So let's say five. That's 55, five, excuse me, 550,000 cars. 
seems like a lot. The road is getting pounded to hell, legally. And I'm amazed it's, it's lasted as long as it has. Thank you. But we've reached the point where, how big are the cracks? Getting bigger, right? Correct. And here's where the state has a thing. Take care of your roads you have. We go another year or two, and it's going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars to get that road back in shape, right? I think my, we're at that point already. My I understanding is, this my understanding is that if you want to do it right on the top part, we'll have to do what we've done to other roads, which is reclaimed. Yes. Right. Yes. So whether it's now or two years from now or whatever, the the expense to reclaim it is not going to change significantly uh, as it deteriorates. For I don't think. <laughs> right. Because you're talking about basically ripping the whole road up and starting over. So whether it's falling apart or it's just got big cracks in it, it's still the same issue. Uh, I hear what you're saying. I, I'm not sure what you're proposing. Well, did we, did we abandon this other stuff and do the top part of Ledge Hill? Uh, I'm gonna throw something out. It's been perfectly obvious to me that all the committees you deal with, and even at town meeting, Jake, we think we should be spending, investing more money in our roads. It's loud and clear to me. I don't know where the answer is, but I'd like to explore that, sir. Well, which of the culverts on North Line in that section? Not North Line. Um, Thank you for the me. Are on the list to be rebuilt or reclaimed or something. Well, part of our culvert. Oh, study. the culvert on the red on the red list. There, yeah. there are actually culverts that are red listed. Particularly on the top of there's one underneath uh, the beginning, right off of Ledge Hill on Dean, and that's a big culvert and it's actually down deep, and uh, that's one that's red listed as well. So, yeah, we'd be getting rid of the red list ones. <laughs> and on the drainage us. issue, which seems to be a thorn in some people's side, up on the top, I mean, it's called Ledge Hill Road for a reason. Yep. It's mostly ledge. Um, what other parts, other than paving and grinding pavement, what other construction issues are up, up on that end? Well, it's drainage, you know, so yeah, you know, we get a, the more we can do with the drainage, the better, the longer it will last. What about catch basins? That's drainage, Ooh. yep. Okay, and that might take five years, but start at Dame Road and do the catch basins every 50 feet, correct? I yeah, I think I think that's something that we should probably have an engineer tell us exactly, you know, how far we should go. Because the, there's some other things involved. As long as the water is in ditches, sixty percent of it's going under the road. When you have a catch basin, it's in a pipe, and, and that road's drying out. The other thing is when you do a culvert. Uh, I was going to ask you about this a little bit later. Doesn't it make sense to, to seat the culvert halfway in the PGA that doesn't freeze? And then do like we did on Lane Pond Road. You, you put a, a precast header at both ends to prevent piping. Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, I, I'm very aware of what you're talking about. Um, so yes, we do use it's, a crush glass. It, it's it's worked already. on Lane Pond, right? Yeah. Well, it's, we've been doing that for, for a number of years now, as far as putting a crush glass underneath the culverts, um, yeah. and we'll continue with that. But also, when you're talking about the uh, precast, those are very expensive, and they are necessary when you have a large flow of water like that. And some of the smaller flows, I think, we get away with. Uh, Coleman will now make them, so you have one that like this. that you put in the bottom, and then you put another one on top. Legos. And what this does is, and you pointed it out to me, if we go with a culvert and, and fill it in and then put rocks here, the water still goes underneath, moisture still goes underneath it. It's called, called piping. piping. Yeah. And you're within three years, you're right back to the problem. Um, I support putting concrete headers that Coleman will build for us 
and I went to another a couple of other towns. Gilbert Blackwell actually formed yeah. they've right. made help uh, had us filming as well. Again, you know, we've done them and they're not cheap, you know. The last one they built for us was I think fifteen thousand dollars for one culvert. And it was a bigger culvert, but nonetheless they're not cheap. What we've been doing on the smaller ones, which I think is working fine, we haven't had any piping, is we've been doing it out of stone and mortar, and it's actually working pretty well. That was one of the pictures that she took on that study report. We did that culvert with the uh, header, we should say, we did that header with, uh, with the stone and mortar, and it seems to be holding up pretty well, and that was one that she pointed out she thought looked very good. Again, I don't think I would do it if I was down on my pond. It all depends on the flow. You know, especially like a seasonal thing. You could probably get away with that when you have the smaller seasonal flow ones, not a regular flow. Well, on Lang Pond, we had uh, overflow problems. Yep, that was one that I... And that's why they paved. I wouldn't home. compromise with the engineer had for sure. I would go exactly by what they had, which... Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, you brought it all up and we're yeah. good with it. I mean, do we want well, to, my, <laughs> do we want to have, I mean, how hard would it be to come up with a number for um, Let's Your Road? And Carol can put something together for it. Yes, correct. Yep, I can certainly ask if I can do that. And scope out the other, I mean, cash bases, et cetera, that need to be looked into. It just reminded me that uh, perhaps like on you know, Sawyer Road just saved twelve thousand dollars because he bundled three projects that were close by. If we included Ledge Hill Road and the public went along with it, we're now bundling three projects very close together, right? So well, the first thing that has to happen on that upper section of Ledge Hill is the drainage has to get fixed, right? Yeah. Because if we just reclaim it and we don't and, and rebuild it and we don't address the drainage issue, yep. uh, we're limiting the life of that road. Uh, so maybe we we'll do the drainage in 2020 and do the whole thing right. in 2021. Right. So but I want sure. We yep. need to know the numbers before we make that decision. I agree. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So thank you. Well, I think we're, we're in agreement. Well, some of us are in agreement that in terms of our regular annual paving that we're looking at, uh, reclaim and base coat all the North Line Road and the upper section of Dame Road for $241,000 is, is what we're looking at. Plus the road improvement stuff, the, you know, digging the rocks out, right. all the stuff. So, which probably brings it pretty close to $300,000. Yep. Uh, now, the other thing beyond that, uh, I would suggest if we're going to do, uh, and I think it makes sense to do something on Upper Ledge Hill, drainage, whatever it is, figure out what the cost is and, and do that as a separate project, uh, separate article of warrant yep. uh, going forward. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if we can make it a separate article, but I, I suppose we could. I mean, we're going to explain it pretty thoroughly to the budget committee, so I think that's sure works. But at a town meeting, it might be a little onerous to go from 285 to 450. Yes. Which is, you know, my thought about a separate article. It's, you know, every year we do road repaving and rebuilding. Right. Okay. We have a situation that needs to be addressed that's extraordinary, if you will. The drainage issue here is going to cost us 50000 whatever it is, to, I have no idea, uh, to do that and you deal with it separately. And uh, it, it doesn't take the road repaving and just shoot it way out the end. Yeah, I guess I'm in agreement. I just don't want to, if we're going to do a separate warrant article, it needs to be a significant project. Yes, right. It's not just. It shouldn't be ten thousand dollars. No, or even forty or fifty thousand. I think it has to be culverts, all the culverts, the catch bases, the whole thing. So that we're we don't have right. to revisit this. 
five or ten years. From right. Now. Yeah, I agree. Well, right. So maybe this is one way to handle it. I don't know, but uh, so I know we have some money left over um, from. What's that called? The SP38. Yes, SP38. So if we could get a head start this year on doing the rest of the culverts on game road that we you know need to do for Hayden and North Line, because at the moment we actually have uh, on North Line we have three culverts that need to be replaced, the ditching to be uh, excavated out, and we need to cover back over the, the culvert crossings for the winter, so we're not trying to maintain them. And we're built head walls and whatnot for them. And then on Dame Road, we actually have on the top third of Dame Road uh, four culvert crossings that need to be replaced. One one of which is a two foot one, and it's it's down pretty deep, so it's going to take a little more extra time. Um, and you know, ditch lines to be excavated. If we could do that this year using that money, next year we could start with the money uh, that we'd be raising. We could be doing working on the drainage and stuff like that on on uh, Red Shell. That put us in pretty good shape for the year after for paving for 2021 paving. Mm -hmm. How long will it take you to get a good number for on on the drainage projects on Upper Red Shell? Uh, I mean, we're talking. You know, color replacement, catch basins, how many catch basins, where they are, I don't know, but uh, I mean, I the, the whole nine yards. Yeah. I would like to, you know, maybe we talk to Boyd Smith. It'd be nice to engineer if we're going to go to that extreme. I mean, well, well I, I know Dave Ford has helped us in the past. You yeah. know, he actually didn't charge us for his time. He's been pretty good about that. When I have a question, I call Dave Ford and he usually stops after work, I meet him on a job site or whatnot, and he explains how he thinks it should be. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a possibility to get a rough number. I don't know if we can hire Boyd Smith to do something like that, or if we need to go through H E B or how that has to happen. Can I sit down with you when sure. the next day or two? And I've done some research. Okay. And I like I've always liked your response and your answers and no, you're very knowledgeable and lucky to have you. So. What well, would be our other use for that money? I guess that would be the next question. Have we planned on putting any of it towards the peer work? Or do I don't. Do you think that well, that was it? my that was my hope is that we yeah. within the period that that money was available could be using it on the peers. Yeah. Now you talked to Crines when you did right. you, so I don't know if it, based on what we heard uh, from. Uh, Tyler Phillips at our last meeting. I don't see we're going to be doing any work this year. I, I don't think we'll be doing any work this year either because even I mean Mike's in, encouraging and positive about the whole thing. It's not a quick but process. It's not a quick right, and they have to put on their agenda and they have to go through their whole talking pony show. So I can see it stretching. The, the boys have to talk to the boys, and everybody sort of get warm and fuzzy about right. it before they actually right. deal with it, right? So. Yeah, and how long can we hold on to that money? It's not in, in a definite period of time. So I, I think it's, we have to obligate it this year. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, we could encumber it this year if we had a specific okay. project, but I don't, we're not close enough on the on the Union Wharf project. To and if it's, yeah, I mean, if it's still six and a half goes together, if it's kind of on drainage over here, and, and we'd be getting the, some of the culverts off the red list, which would be yeah. also nice. Yeah. Right. What about uh, using it on some projects that need to be done as soon as possible? For example, repair dirt and road four corners. So I actually did I tie started. that in. I tied that in on this list. I have the North Line, and then I have the Dane Road, and I also have during the 171 intersection to be paid at the same time since we got our paving done. Um, I think that's the time to do that one. We're going to do this. I spoke to Mr. Eldridge and what needs to happen is uh, the paving that was done by the town has created a saucer. 
and the water comes down next to the yellow house and goes across the road and never makes it to the culvert. He recommended that we contact a company like Allstate and have them dig out the pavement and make a three and a half to four foot swale as far back as you can go at a one or two percent rate. So as the water that comes off that property and the water that comes out of the basement, there's two drains there, goes into the, uh, the culvert. But that wouldn't be cutting out? The existing paper as much as just make it off the swirl off the side of the road, correct? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't bring the, the pictures with me. If anybody looks at where those cones are, where a private citizen put those cones, is it's here's the catch basin, and the pavement is up like that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so there is a section where it yes. comes off of one section. And I've asked him, I said, does he have a problem with the town working with the state where technically that's on their property? And he said no. Yeah. Anyone who looks at this understands that the you weren't there when they, they put the coat on and... They went extra thick. Oh yes. I, I mean a number of inches. Yeah. And it's now got to the point where, uh, what's that intersection is a thing with me, is I've now seen multiple instances of trucks with trailers and cars and school buses coming down and they're into the next lane. No, because they have, because they're vehicle tracks. I saw one old lady go through there and I thought she was gonna destroy her car and tear the rear axle up and she was just putting along. This has been a couple of years and this is absolutely important that this gets done. We have the money to do it. Yeah, no, I, I agree, and I would like to do the paving for the cross culverts that we just did on uh, North Line. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we'd do that at the same time, so we're going to get a better deal if we get them all done. Do all the, all the patch yeah. paving together. Because it's probably a day's worth of work yeah. for a company like yeah. that. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. They'd and, like to and have tie, a And tie this, uh, whatever's necessary around this uh, state drain. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's got some complications in another in your business, but as you continue with that swale, I think there's going to be some tree roots in the way. Well, how, the how, how far out. how far off the road are you talking about the swale going? Uh, three feet? Three and a half to four feet. Okay. Still within the right of way? That's the other thing that I don't know. Well, 25 feet from the center line. Yeah. Because that's what we always run into is... And, and the other you know, thing you, is... You got, you got a 50 yeah. foot right of way and for proper drainage, a lot of times, it has to go outside the right of way, which means you're in somebody's yard. I don't think this one is that far okay. off All the right. side of the road, I think. But yeah. there are lots of places where, where it does. Yep, yeah. yeah, true. But we have dug that area out that he's referring to. We've already done that before in the past. Mm -hmm. We've excavated that out. We did loan it back in and see it for him. But I think this time he's saying maybe it makes more sense right. to do yep. a swale out of pavement I agree with that. We've already done it without the... And the other yeah. thing, out of courtesy, I'd be willing to go with you and speak to the landowner, so... He, it's Perfect. a new one there, so... Good. Um, that kind of thing. But, you know, this is a dangerous intersection. Yep. Okay. okay. I, al I also listed off a number of other projects that have been pending. Entrance here, entrance to... Uh, uh, the, the town transfer station, mm -hmm. mowing, and on Tuesday I'll be speaking with a guy, Clay put me on to a guy who will do some of the brush cutting and mowing of the different projects that uh, you and I have talked about. Um, well, I, I know, the, uh, as I, if I remember, the SP38 money is supposed to be used for additional projects, for stuff that you don't, you haven't already budgeted for. So. The, the driveway apron sets in the budget, whether we get to it or not. Uh, so I don't think it falls into that. But we have money set aside in my budget for aprons. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting to see that we can make it. Right, that's legitimate. what I'm saying. So we've already budgeted money there. I don't right. think, I think we've yeah. run a foul spending the SP38 money for something that's already in the budget. I have a copy, sir, of what it says. 
and it's underlined, unused balance may be carried over to following municipal fiscal year and expended for highway construction, reconstruction, and maintenance purposes. It also goes on to talk about um, it can be used for related equipment. Right. I've asked the powers to be, and I said, they said yes, it could be used for that. But it still has to come from this board, so. All right, well, let's put together a plan here if we can. So you're going to get us some numbers on the drainage on that show and whatever other issues you have down there on the game room which you want to get started early on. And the 171 junction with Bergen. Yeah, I actually came up with the, the numbers to change the culverts out on North Line and the top of Dean and doing the ditching, head walls, and also intersection uh, to be repaired at the same time on 171 and Durgan. And we're talking approximately 35,000. Okay. I think I have 5,000 left for paving, and I think there's 29,000. <coughs> On this it's 29,000, I think, 500 or something to that place. As I look at your budget, you've spent 80% of it mm -hmm. because winter was so bad. How much money out of your budget do you need to set aside for this year's? Have you done any research on can that? We, can, can, we, can we finish this issue before we move on to the next one? Yep. That's my suggestion. Yeah. So you're saying there's twenty five thousand dollars left or twenty nine thousand dollars left in that? Yes. Yeah, the email thread someplace has got that number in it, right? I, I actually have it written down. Oh, here it is. Yeah. We have twenty nine thousand six hundred and nine dollars. Okay. And I don't know if I have a copy of that stuff in my paving but And what is that? The block grant? Yes. Yes. Yes, that was the uh, must be the PD. And I have, as far as for the paving budget from left over from this year, we have $5,828 left. So between the two, I think we have enough to get it done this year if we want to do that route. So that's four culverts on Dane, three culverts on North Line, yeah. uh, and uh, Correct the drainage going into that catch basin at the corner of 171 and dirt. Correct. Plus, it'd be the and the 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 correct. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I'm up for that. Okay. Should we vote? I'll make a motion that we uh, spend the money that we've got on the set items. On the, <laughs> yep. the list that was just created. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Right. Winter budget? Winter budget. Okay, so we did I've set aside, or not spent, I should say not spent aside, but uh, we have money left over from summer, purpose and not spent, where I had twelve thousand almost six hundred dollars. So we're gonna add that to the winter that I have right now, just under thirty thousand. And then I'm hoping to save some another hopefully ten to fifteen thousand dollars from either you know a combination of fall and you know some of the other stuff that we have uh, left. I'm hoping to try to just take a little from each one if we can save money somehow from each item that we have left. And the crack ceiling and uh, and whatnot. What do you anticipate you're going to need for uh, your winter budgets? Well, I'm going by your math because yep. it's been pretty close. Yes. And uh, I think you have me at like 58000 mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to shoot for and hope for the best that we don't get a lot of snow early. Right. Sounds good, sir. So is your fifty-seven thousand might book now to finish up your other 
expenses. You still got um, your upside down in your catch basins, but you still got a little bit of money left in Publix. <coughs> Are you going to do any more roadside mowing? No. Okay, okay. so you got that one. Right. And tree work, tree removal. Or I mean, I'm sorry, apron paving. And that one we're going to leave a little bit loose. <coughs> I'm getting prices on it now. I'm talking about all state on that. Oh, not all state, excuse me. So do you feel um, that that is going to cover this in the transfer station? Well, we're going to find out. I need to find out. That's what we're hoping for. I need to speak to the transfer station because that intersection needs to be moved over. It's not a right angle. I saw a, a, a trailer truck almost tip over the other day when it went up on the bank. Maybe we could look at that. You know, I have it drawn up for you and I need your expertise. At the transfer station? Yes. I know you're referring to it because and when, when you go to diagonal like that, it's it's not correct. When trucks come from Sodom Road, Moultonboro direction, uh, <coughs> you drove a tra tractor trailer, it's tough getting in there. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, Lucas, that's doing the power lines, went and put cones there. All right, and you've got 7,500 crack sealing in process that you adamantly refuse to do. No, no. What are you going to do about crack sealing? We do it every year. Okay. We just don't do every road because okay. 7,500 is not going to, it's a drop in the bucket. Okay. But we always do all the bridges. We seal all the bridges so that, you know, we don't get okay. drainage problems going through and causing future problems. So we've always done that and we usually take our best roads and start with our best roads and we Go as far as we can, like the Sodom Road, I'll do some of that. And you know, we just take our best roads and work our way down. I would guess you yep. can go Union Wharf, right? Yeah, we're just small, they're small right now, so we'll wow. go quickly. And, and, right, and, and sealing them keeps them, doesn't, doesn't keep them from opening up, but it slows the process. It keeps the water from getting right, in, hopefully. Yep. So yeah, that I crack seam is going to happen yet in the next few weeks. Yep. So you think the 7,500 and crack? Okay. Will you have any money in the budget to do the five stop lines? I do. I think we will have the money. And I called again yesterday to Lakes Region and uh, Striking. Uh, I'm still waiting for a call back. But yes, he's going to He's going to give us the deal since he was so late. So we'll, we're going to find the money for that and make it happen. All right. So your CIP submissions? Yeah. Uh, those, yeah. And there's a work session for you there for you too that will have them for you to refer to. That vanilla one and the red one, yes. Some are ones we've already submitted and then some are ones you might want to ask them about. I think that's how I did it. So, as of right now, I have submitted five. Mm -hmm. You can always change these if you need to. And I did change one already yesterday. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, there was a mistake made. I can't read Trisha's numbers. She can't read my numbers. I don't know. We just agree that we disagree on that. But who has the better handwriting? Uh, so, I did move out the paving of the town garage parking lot. She had accidentally put down 2020, which we moved up to 2022. That'll give us a little bit more time to basically budget for it. Uh, then I have the paving that I put in for CIP at 285. You know, again, something to change, but I had to get these in before right. we had a meeting. Yep. I don't know how you guys felt about that number. And then I put in money for, uh, this one is for next year. Uh, I look at getting the standards next year. Um, you know, it's $15,000 to replace the two standards that we have. You know, after talking with Lloyd, you know, I, I, they're pretty old. They were, they were old before I started. Well, you already saved us money when we traded one yeah. for two. 
and it didn't cost the town anything. So you're all. So these are for the uh, smaller trucks. Correct. Yep, the smaller trucks. Uh, yeah, they are old, and we've done some maintenance on them over the years. As far as we have changed one of the motors, one well, has a newer motor, but that was probably five or six years ago. Uh, they don't last forever, but. Now, are you looking? Uh, are you looking at uh, poly? Or are you looking at uh, stainless steel? Stainless, um, yeah. yeah. The polys, you know, great idea, but they're not very rugged. The, the problems are now starting to come after a few years, because yeah. they've only been out a handful of years. Yeah. And yeah, they have problems. Yeah. So I think most people are going back. And nice if you're just a small company and you have a pickup truck, and you can take that sander in and out yourself. Yeah. That's what's nice about right. it. But they don't make big commercial ones really like heavy duty. So it's really not for our highway department. Okay. Uh, so we're looking at the stainless steel ones. And uh, you know, we're looking at about $15,000. Again, if we need to change that, we can change that. that for two? Correct. Two small ones, yep. Okay, so we're not replacing um, the truck until 2022. And that's the 10-wheeler. So that's another thing we probably want to talk about. I talked to our dealer that we bought the truck from, Fred Gallon. And, you know, I, we were originally talking, I think we were going to go 10 years. And he said, well, you're honestly do a much, much better off financially if you trade them at seven years, because that's what most towns are doing now. You're absolutely correct. Because at 10 years, well, at between nine and 10 is when you're going to start putting money into them. You know, you could be putting $50,000 worth of repairs into them. And that's money you don't get back mm -hmm. when you trade it in. So it's just it, keeping it going. Exactly. Yep. That's no value to it right, when you're doing those repairs. So he said that it's a proven fact, it, you know, right now that, and I asked him to send me some kind of literature so I could present it to you, but I have not received it yet. Uh, that you do better by trading every seven years. You get a better, you know, investment on your dollar by. Uh, getting yours traded in at $75,000, it's still worth $75,000, and buying the newer one without putting money in all the time in between. I can't support that more wholeheartedly. I spoke to four road agents and highway managers, and they all talked about six, seven, and eight years their 10 wheelers disappear. And so, when were you planning on um, putting this into the or uh, if you want to go to seven years, what would that be? Because uh, it's a 2015, it would be 2022. The truck's at 2015. Okay, so we've got two years and up to do that. Correct. And unless yep. we want to put some money inside, but we'll talk about that at a later date. We want to start building a cash reserve as opposed to paying yes. for all at So the only thing you've got going on is Sanders? And Faden? Uh, nope. And then I have uh, the heating system. But, okay. but that's still out. That's not for this year. Um, no, I'm just talking about 2020. Oh, okay. Yep. That's it. Paving. And so and approximately $305,000. It's going to be $15,000, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. So you're talking about Sanders this year? Yeah. Yeah. If, okay. if we can, if we can't, you, you know, you guys, you will figure it out. Well, we don't want to load up 2022 and right. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. So, um, so 2021. I think when you when you put these projects in, you ask for when you want them. Yeah. Somebody else is going to move pieces around. The, yeah. The, so the chessboard, the but budget. you know, and somebody else is going to move priorities. But yep. uh, to try and second guess where you think you need it because you think somebody else wants it there is... Uh, so we're comfortable thinking that we're going to get through this year with the seniors that we have mm -hmm. without putting a lot of money into them. But we're thinking the following year we're going to be putting money into them. So yeah, and then with the heating sense. system, you're at $30,000 worth of additional more articles as, as opposed to 15 and 15, which makes a lot more budget okay. sense. Right. So if you do the Sanders this year, the heating system next year, and maybe we'll talk about putting some money aside for this dump truck. Yeah. Which I I don't know if I'm going to re-election that, 
But if I run for re-election and it comes back, we're going to buy a dump truck. It's going out to bid. We're not calling a deal or making a deal. I'm just not going to put up with that. Because I think we spent too much on the last one. And I think if we don't put it... I don't do deal on that last one. <laughs> I'm sure you think we do. But there are lots of deals out there in the world. And there's a lot of... Uh, we just need to spec it out, put it on the, on the street and see what yeah. we get. But last time, too, keep in mind, it wasn't planned that we right. were doing that. No, I appreciate right. that. So <laughs> we did the best I we can could. pontificate as much as I want, but I understand yeah. the situation. Yep. Yep. I think what you, did, fingers at you. Yep. Yeah. what you did last Correct. time worked Road out agent. fine. But yep. We're happy to have it. Yep. But it's uh, yeah, to, but to it's, take a more planned approach. Yeah. And, and, uh, it's like the used body. And, I mean, I just. A lot of the stuff on that deal, I just didn't care for. But I well, think we it was, could put it together. It was what we could way. afford at the time. Yeah, it was. We could put it together better next time. Yeah, if you yeah. had more money to work with. Sure. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. It is going to be more money, though. No question about it. Right. Right. And. But yeah, I'd rather never have a used body again. Yeah. Should be having new every time from this point on. Right. It'll be more planned out. Yeah, it's more anti <laughs> That's a, for another day. Yep. All right, so that's the CIP. Anything else from Mr. Dan Green? I'm good. I have some things, so if I can. Okay. Remember you and I talked about uh, doing what Santa Harbor did in other towns, putting out to bid our tree cutting? The tree cutting. I'd like to go over that with you with your convenience. Okay. Basically, uh, in a nutshell, it's they would come every Tuesday, and they would do, first of all, storm damage cleanup. I chose not on Monday because there's so many holidays. And they would do uh, uh, trees that are hazardous, trees that your plow is banging into. Um, if they can get ahead on some on uh, road issues where the trees have to come down. Uh, and then you heard my comment. Maybe you can call me and we'll give yes. services. So I this would have to be figured into the budget yes. differently than what we have now. Right. Because yeah. It's not going to fit in right. as it is. Uh, there's, there's more than enough to do. Uh, just yep. Can I just go through a couple of other things while you're here? Sure. We have three projects that have been talked about. Shirley Way, Federal Corner Road, and Ledge Hill Road. We've talked about Ledge Hill. Citizens have come in and taken pictures and have talked about that. Where do they fit into our plans? We talked about Ledge Hill Road, but what about the other two? <coughs> yes, especially where citizens have taken the time to come in and speak to us. Okay. Well, I think we're going to have to just try to figure out where we can fit it into our budget at this point for this year. If it's going to happen this year or next year, we're going to have to. So, may, are you talking about the federal corner piece beyond the Burley road? road? Yes. So it's Burley Road. Right. Yeah. At, at least, actually, there's a number of culverts, a number of areas on Federal Corner Road, and that's becoming a busy road and a feeder road. But I'm talking right now about Burley. Now, Burley. Well, I think we should discuss that. I think we need to discuss that at another time. It's almost like a Lane Pond Road incident uh, issue. Well, well, I, mean, I think some of it you know, comes off the driveways that creates a lot of issues. So. And but I mean, maybe if we're looking at, I mean, hypothetically, yeah. taking the Ledge Hill Road piece and putting a separate Warren article together for the preparation for pavement in the form of drainage plant, maybe we package something together with. You know, Burley Road, Ledge Hill Road, and whatever else needs to have, you know, attention next year. Yeah. Right. And so this year we're doing this one. Right. Next year we're going to do a special road project for right. a different road. I like right. the idea of that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's what we call it. Yeah. We, we, yeah we, special road project. More articles. Yeah. Maybe we, can I mean, we can't. Well. I think it would be foolhardy for us to say we're just going to do all this stuff in one year because we have limited, limited, limited resources. You know, it's yep. all stuff you have to arrange. You have to supervise what goes on, and uh, you only have so much time. So, to the so idea that you know you get all money. these different things going in different places. Yep. 
I drove yeah. that the other day. And the Mac, you know, there's all kinds of places that ultimately will spend money. Yeah, but if we can make an effort to do some targeted say, special road projects, two, yeah, two yeah. projects a year, say, mm -hmm. you know, let it chill up early, and then next year do something, two more. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a neighbor pointed out there's still standing water on the lower section of Shirley Way. Is it called it missing or, or something? <sighs> when it's not missing, we have a beaver problem up there. <laughs> Beavers. Yep, they haven't been. They came in all at once. And I thought we had them yep. taken care of, but they do. They're like Mexicans. They all come together. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go stream of consciousness here. Could you speak with Jack to, in order to get the generator in the electric company to move the meter? Okay. Yep. And, and speak to him. Um, um, our our rec director is uh, having knee surgery. Is there a place? Uh, adjacent to your building to store uh, the uh, many tables we have around town. The picnic tables? Yes. Overnight. Clay Clay has mentioned that if he puts the his box piles in, he doesn't know if there's going to be room uh, out there. So, um, I don't think we have any indoor room. I know we have Zero I, I, I thought I saw some a rental sign for uh, the other half. Oh, of that are you talking about over there? That, that, that building. I think you meant at the yep. town garage. So that's been meant to. Okay. Yep. Um, if there's some place you can think of, uh, if you could speak to Clay, he'd be willing to work with you. And Maybe we need to pick up another container to put up at the transfer uh, station. Um, I've already given that information. Uh, what about the the machine shed. Is there room in there for those the the No, no. Oh, oh, the, on 171. On 171. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think we call it the tractor shed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember when the tractor used to be in there. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I, I think it's funny, I'll call it. Is, 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 that, yeah. many is, years. is that where some of their equipment on dock, that docks already go? Not anymore. I mean, they used to store them up there, and now they have a little shed down by the mm -hmm. beach that they keep them in. Yeah, we store some stuff there, but I think it's minimal. I think it's um, a crack sealing machine mm -hmm. that goes in there, and I think we still have some ropes that go up there that are on a big spool for the swim lines. Mm -hmm. So there is some stuff, but I think it is minimal. Maybe so we'll maybe, that. maybe that's they can go in there. Yeah, I'll look at it. It's good. The other thing is, uh, when I talked to Dennis, maybe leave the oldest picnic table out so it can be used by people who want to sit under the pavilion. Just a thought, safe space. Oh, yep. Okay, so. I, I have some positive things to say. They've happened on your watch. A granite post on Durgan Road has disappeared. Well, that was on you. <laughs> They saw the minutes and read about it in the newspaper and they called about it and they actually moved it on their own before it could even get up there. Well, the uh, other thing is the stumps, are, uh, you guys spent a day grinding them up on Union Wharf Road. It's going to save your snow plows. Good mm -hmm. job. Boy, mm -hmm. they worked hard and directed traffic and, and uh, whatever. So, and the other thing that happened on your watch is that pole on County Road is being moved. So uh, I don't know how involved you were in all these things, but they happened on your watch. Yeah, so that's great. thank you. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the br brush chipper. Uh, I see where we spent a thousand dollars on it. My vision, and if I'm out of line, say so, was to have it thoroughly checked like we did the six wheeler and use the uh, the uh, we certainly Vol Volkswagen funds. I, uh, just, a, just a thought. So. Yeah. So I read that, and, and it said it had to be used a minimum of 500 year, uh, 500 hours a year, and you'd have to have that documented. We don't use it that much. There's no way we've ever used yeah. it that much. That thing doesn't even probably have 1,500 hours on it since the day it was bought brand new. How old is it? Hmm. It's longer than you've been here, right? Yeah, much older. Yeah, more okay. than that. I guess it was, it's like a 2004, maybe. Right. Uh, that, that's where I was coming from. But it actually, it hunts pretty good. You know, 
It's fine right now if you want to see it. It, it fires right up and runs I trust, up you, trust your judgment. As well. I had thought about uh, replacing it in you and, and Clay using it. I almost think it'd be better off to run to uh, have somebody come in with a tub grinder okay. to dump and yes. just feed it with an excavator. Okay, Clay is located somewhere that oh, uh, yeah. a lot cheaper than what I was aware of. So he's uh, he's on top of that. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. I've talked to other people about it in other towns and that's what they've done. The other thing is um, I went to uh, to uh, Crowell's and they'd be willing to inspect and change the fluids in your tent or whittler. Uh, inspection would be $35 instead of $75. They'd also put it up on the lift and go through and check everything. So I was planning we'd just continue on with the dealership that we did. I don't know. I'm feeling like since they're holding the warranty on it, I'd like them to go through it so that any warranty items they can fix. What I did is I've gone through the past budgets and it was $75 to inspect it to a post office box in Wolfboro. And, uh, I just did this research, but I knew I could speak to you. And yep, we can certainly talk about it, but I do like to bring it to the dealer where we yes. purchased it and have them go through it. I think the guy you deal with is a selectman in the next town over. He is. Remember yep. we had that conversation. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you. Thanks. Now, we, uh, from, from the road survey, uh, uh, one of the things that was part of that whole thing is that they're going to come. Mm -hmm. to, to oh. really, uh, they, they'll sit down with us every year to update, to upgrade right. that. So does it make sense to reach out to LRPC and see about right. getting a a date on the calendar to sit down with them and I like that idea. Get your culverts plugged into the survey and, and the have it all updated. Yeah. Yep. I yeah. think that's a great idea. Yeah, actually wanted to call them. Sure. If we okay. can get that done in the next thirty or sixty I days. Think a snack. I'll, I'll, I'll call them as soon as I leave here if we can get a hold of them. See if we can't get something you know as nice, quickly as possible. At least to come in and talk to us. Yep. And you know Jim, I have a couple of questions before you leave. Okay, may I, Mr. Sure. Chair? Okay, how how many years is the warranty on the truck? Is it a ten year warranty? Uh, no, I believe it's five year. Oh, five year. Okay, fine. Uh, our discussion up on Butternut Lane and for the rest of the town, that stuff that I pointed out patched on the side is that an apron? That is no. That's, that's not an apron. No, that's just a road edge. All right, so that's just one of probably many areas in town. What does that fall under as far as? Talk about the edge of the road where that's the crumple and everything else, yes. and you have it on a ledge hill road and everything else. Yep. Is there a special project for that? No, that just falls under maintenance. Under uh, our, uh, you know. General maintenance. Yep. Okay, fine. Uh, and in reference to Lloyd's comment about Durgan and Ledge Hill Road, and about the amount of traffic and the heavy traffic and everything else, this is, we we have to build the cost into our budget to repair the road. For these vehicles coming through town to make a shortcut over to uh, 109 by the water. Or in the winter time, oh damn, this is my still in the winter time we impose weight limits on the road, right? Or something like that. Mud season. Mud season. Well, whatever spring. the yeah. case may yeah. be, okay? Yeah. But if these vehicles are destroying the road for the size, the weight, and everything else. I don't want to do restraint of trade, but you know it's still money out of our pocket. Thank you for listening. I can't imagine that there's that much traffic on Ledge Hill Road or Durgan Road, commercial truck traffic that isn't directly or tangentially affected by needs in Tuftonboro. I mean, why would a truck go that way? Yeah, no, I think um, it's where work's being done in <coughs> that yeah, you some. But keep in mind. These trucks pay a lot more money for their uh, registrations so that the money goes back to fixing roads. Yep. I mean, an average dump truck probably pays $1,200 a year for registration yeah. every year. Yeah. That's an old one, not a new one. It's I know a guy that pays 35 k a year just to register his trucks. Plus fuel you yeah. Yeah. yeah, Not really using all the rest and, of it. And be honest with you, being in a little bit in the trucking business, mm -hmm. it's not a money-making business. It's necessary evil. Yeah. 
you just roll your money over, but you have to have it to stay in business. There's no money being made. The cost is so much on those things. So yeah, it's so the only guy making money is the guy who owns the gravel. Yep. <laughs> anyway. All right, thanks, Jen. Right. Thank you. I'll give you a call, sir. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Um, do you want to go over the estimated revenues now? Sure. So are we done with the betterment tax? That was on Zandi Dow, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So their last payment was last year or this year? Uh, 2018, right? Yes, I believe it was. Sell tax sale property, does that fall under sale of municipal property? Oh, tax deed. Tax deed, yeah. Okay, so we're at 899. And is that our net? 899? I believe that was what we netted out of those two sales. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Primex, we had asked for a check back, uh, not a holiday. <coughs> right. Right. And our fund balance is still close to a million bucks. It'll probably be over a million by the time the year ends. Right. And this is going to help us set our tax rate. Right? Yes, yes. Along with the uh, rebound numbers, which hopefully we'll have by the end of the month. Are there still people coming in to yeah, meet the road? Yeah, we at the what, fire station yeah. Monday and the, and the town house on the following. Sure. Yeah. Um, so just to let you know, we did receive utility values. So recently, I think yesterday the day before. Um, so Rod will be able to work with that and even on Monday as well. 
He'll have his last meeting with people to make um, adjustments. The October meetings, more than likely, depending on timing and things, those people might have to go through the abatement process. But nonetheless, point being, be on track to submit them this one soon. Like probably, he said, you know, shortly okay. after Monday, I think so. Good. Can I ask a question about budgets? Um, I've had a couple department heads ask me when budgets for them are due by. Tomorrow. Have we set a date? <laughs> well, I mean, we're, we've got a budget hearing on a budget meeting on the 1st of October. That's going to start, you know, I'm going to bring a lot of little budgets yeah. forward. But we're going to want to bring larger budgets forward soon, sooner than later. So I don't know what other information they need. We've got the the uh, cost of living set. Have we set a date saying we want your budget in by, like we did with the? Uh, yeah, I don't think we have, but I don't know that if we need to. I guess we can. But Clay, I know, is pretty close on his. Yes. I don't know how um, um, the fire chief's still on his, but he's, he's, he's always far. working. He's yes. coming down on Monday anyway. Yeah. So I guess when they come in, although so we we'll have that conversation. Yeah, I think then we can draw, maybe yeah, I'm going to negotiate. I just want you to be able to have a handful of information when you go. Can you please vote on the revenue? Diane asked me to have uh -oh. a vote on it. Thank you. I move we accept. You want to put a number on it? Mm -hmm. Read the number. Yeah. Grand total of estimated revenue is two million eight hundred and twenty-seven thousand one hundred and eighty-six dollars. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, signature file. I've got a, uh, a letter to the folks whose property we had to take. I don't know if you've had a chance to read it, but it's uh, it partially pays the owed taxes. The balance of due is eleven thousand four hundred sixty-six dollars, and we told them we'd give them thirty days to make some effort on that. I'll make a motion to sign this. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the next item for signature is an intent to cut on lots 3228, 3229, and 3217 on Middle Road. I'll make a motion that we sign this. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's the 20th, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And We need to sign a release form for the state and the Department of Transportation. Um, this is the acceptance of the Manager Department of Transportation uh, and their responsibility for the $1,499 damage claim to the fence at 19 Mile Bay. So I'll move uh, Chairman sign it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I just repeated for the file. Okay. I've signed both, so I'm going to turn them into the file. Okay. We've got a groundwater management permit for waste management division uh, for the transfer station. And this is a renewal, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay. To what company? Uh, the group. Is this from the state of New Hampshire? It's yeah. going to the state, and Clay did speak to Dave Allwine of Stantec, and it's appropriate yeah. they said they Dave agreed Alwine. to um, this yeah. needs to be submitted. So it is groundwater management permit issued under RSA 485C4, Roman numeral 8. 
to a responsible party to remedy contamination associated with past discharge or regulated contaminants and to manage the use of the contaminated groundwater. Examples include sites contaminated for leaking underground storage tanks, unlined landfills, which is what we are, and regulated pursuant to RSA 14M. Um, so it is what we do every year. All right, and this is a single signature, is that right? I have to do this. So I will vote that the chairman signed this uh, application. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And I'll let you fill it out, okay? Can yep. <coughs> the next one is an application to cut timber on map 32, lot 24. <coughs> I'll make a motion that we sign this. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We have an application for timber cutting on map 65, lot 1 and 2, and lot 2, or lot 1 dash 2, and lot 2 dash 1 on Line Pond Road. I'll move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Historically, but we have to resubmit them every year. And when's the CIP meeting? Well, they're already in session. Next they asked around by. Oh, I know, but they oh, want with us you all guys, come Wednesday, and see us. that's right. Yeah, Is that Wednesday. Wednesday? Yeah. So, can we have a list on Monday of what we're bringing them? Well, absolutely. Um, but what I typically do first is submit them through the portal. And then they all get it emailed to them. Right. And that's what I've been doing. So, I don't because know. Because on the. On the on the Tucker Road Bridge and the Sodom Road Bridge, I don't think it's not on there. We, we were not on the list. So it's going to be 2035 or something. Right, with the state, that's yeah. right, right. We're on the CFP plan. So, yeah. Should I just leave that in limbo right now until you meet with them? So, uh, yeah, you, you went to this I did. Bridge, the bridge meeting. <coughs> and and we, I actually stood up and complained. Yeah. So we, I thought, had at least one of those on the list no, several years ago. Right. The, yeah. the problem is, is that, that I see, and, and I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just flipping through the pages. Yes. They said we're not doing anything but state roads. Okay, well, why are we spending $447,000 on County Farm Road and over Blood Brook in Wilton? I don't know. I mean, we spent another three hundred eighty-one thousand on Stagecoach Road over Burton Pond in Wilton. These are not state highways. Right. These are just town roads. Yep. I mean, there's a million one hundred eighty-four going over um, Kingbrook Road over Kingbrook Bridge. Bridge. So you got one five one eight. You get a little over two million bucks being spent in Wilton, and we're we've been kicked off the list. So I've got a card here for that particular DOT operative, Mr. William Cass, and I think we need to put some pressure on. Them. I mean, because neither one of our projects are on any list that they have. 
I don't know. Did you have a conversation with someone? I did, and I can give you a little summary. That okay, could you, could you give me a summary? If you don't mind, I'll read from my yes. notes here. Um, so HEB wrote a nice summary to us about, which is just what you're saying, the state right. aid bridge program funding is in turmoil. Um, they were HEB was told that tentatively in two years, projects will be reassigned beginning with the fiscal year 2031. This included both our projects. Um, and a new ranking process is being presented through this GACIT, but I'm not sure what that stands for, to replace the prior first come first serve basis. So it's not going to be like that anymore, and they won't even be looked at for two years. And our projects got put in that pile. Right, and our projects, there are five criteria, and I've got yes. here somewhere. And two of the five criteria we're going to struggle with: one is population, and the other is traffic. Um, Sodom Road gets a lot of traffic. Yeah, number one road, but yes. But tough to run that, and that's not so much. Right. Um, However, it's the only road to the neck. Yeah, I guess. I, I mean, we could commandeer um, the road around the basin and, and work something out there to get the traffic to go that way. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, I think it'd be easy, and I don't think the Ferraris would like it too much. But it doesn't even go through. Yeah. It can go through though. No. 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 Really? Really. I'm looking at the map. The only way it used to go through is a barber pole to uh, Banfield. Right. Banfield yeah. Road, barber pole road. Right. Yeah. Banfield's back toward. Uh, one on nine. Right. right. Yeah, and and in theory they connect up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah we do. Have you driven that recently? Which one? Well, Why don't roll through the Banfield? You can't. I, I know. There's a fence in the way. Well, we can take the fence. <laughs> trees. Down. Yeah. At any rate, I, I don't think you get a fire truck through there. No, for sure you can't. No. Yeah. You know the half billion dollars worth of real estate value down there is just going to be. Right. Right. So I and, said, and making you know, improvements to that road to make it passable bring the marshmallows. would would be a huge expense. Yeah, it'd be as much as the bridge. More than the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. And the bridge would get eighty percent back. Yeah, well, well we don't. Yeah. Not I mean if we all yeah, only I, said, the state I said you can't do this. I said you cannot red list a bridge and not have us have a bridge program. I mean, if you're going to do that, then, then we're going to stop paying the highway use taxes. Yep. And what, what's the point? We have to fix everything ourselves, and you're giving money to other towns. And, yeah, said, this is, I mean, I'm just seeing a lawsuit all over this thing. I'm good. And you guys need to get your shit together with the governor and council. And uh, Mike was there, Kranz. I said, get some money here. I mean, the, it's the governor that vetoed the the uh, bridge funding. And when the legislature upped the gas tax two years ago for the first time since uh, uh, whatever, the legislature went and broke it up to fishing game and everyone else and didn't put it toward bridges or roads. Right. Right. So, uh, you know, the frauds uh, have an issue. Right. And part of it is, I mean, you know, our legislature just needs to get their ass in here. <laughs> I mean, when was the last time we had a legislator come to meet us? Dr. Marsh. Yeah. When he was running. So, at any rate, I don't see anything happening with those bridges, so we're going to have to... The only thing that does bail us out a little bit is the repairs that were made uh, to Sodom Road that bought us some more time. Right, but that's an expense that we had to make because the state inspected the bridge and decided it was, you know, yeah, so yeah, it's spoiling, derated it. Yep. And they're saying, well, we're federally, federally mandated to do bridge inspections. They said, that's fine with me, just don't list them. Put it, inspect them, do whatever you want to do with it, but do not tell us what we got to do with our bridges. We'll do it ourselves. Maybe we'll hire our own inspector. And, and we could fix the bridge, we could probably fund it ourselves. Yep. But. It just seems, I, I get a little animated about Wilton having $2 million worth of bridge work done and Tuffenberg gets nothing. I don't know who lives in Wilton that's sucking up to the legislature. Right on. So, anyway. And I did talk to them about 
So that was on a ranch at that point in time. The Four Corners at 171 and Durgan Lunchill Road. Mm -hmm. I said, we're looking for something. And I, I said, I'm sure no one at this table is the, are the ones who uttered this, but someone from your department said there has to be a fatality before you do anything. And if we have to have a human sacrifice in order to get some road work done or some safety issues addressed, I think we've got bigger problems. I so, you, you are absolutely right. I knew the last three people killed at 171 and 28. And I took it upon myself with permission to, to go speak to them. And the legislature overruled the, the highway the department. DRT. Right. And guess what's going in? Yeah. Now, not because of me. But, there's, but uh, at any rate, I said, we need, you know, we wanted some sort of signage, we wanted some traffic yeah. things going on. I want a yellow, blink, blinking yellow light. I mean, the other thing that they're talking about is doing some detouring of traffic off of 16 across 171. I said, now what do I do with my local traffic? You've increased the traffic. I mean, right now, if you drive over to West Ossipee, you, you wait 20 minutes in line, or you go around the Whittier Road, the old, mm -hmm. the old road. Yeah, mm -hmm. And there's, it's bumper bumper well across there. Right, well, I have that question in when the police chief is here. What are you doing for in case no patrol because it uh, 171 is busy now I think about a third of the trucks are going over there and I'm prepared to ask him like we have buddies in the county and the state police help us out Monday but a there's, week there's no signage so it doesn't really matter I mean, we have the yeah. police up there so they won't go 55 but when a dump truck's sitting there at the corner of Durgan and 171 waiting to bring his load down to the septic system at Camp Belknap for half an hour while the traffic rolls by. I mean, we're just going to end up with road rage and all kinds of other stuff. Well, the third person in the last year told me that he was coming up the hill in his truck and a tractor trailer at 171 at Durgan Road went through at 40 miles an hour. Yeah, didn't even bother to stop. And didn't bother to stop. And that's the third person that told me they've almost got killed at that intersection. So I had that, I had the, I want to crosswalk down on 109 for the beach. Um, and I said, a crosswalk at the Tuftenbrook General Store, crosswalk at the uh, police station at the library. I said, and every time we've, we've approached anybody about, and this was back when the store was open in yes. Eskimo Bay, and you've got parking on both sides. They said, they don't want to slow the traffic down and they're not going to put a crosswalk in. And I said, we're going to start taking our own paint can out there and putting our own signs up there because if you—that's what a couple of towns that direction have done. Yeah, yeah, because it's just it, it becomes an untenable situation. But I did talk to Mike about 19 Mile Pier. He was surprised at that he he never heard of a grant and and right. But the other day when I was talking to Sue weeks we started postulating that where Union Wharf Road was at Range Road that it probably ran to the edge of the lake and people launched their boats or whatever they did yeah. and when the lake rose three or four feet it flooded that section of road where that intersection it used to be underwater uh, three centuries ago yeah that's all been but if they flooded the road, then, then you're looking at, well, okay, you can't just take land, and that would be a taking. Mm -hmm. we've, we've got a 50-foot right, a right of way out through there mm -hmm. to the end of where the original roadbed was. Um, so there's another angle, yes. if you will, um, for the amount of... But Mike, as Mike, and I'm certain he doesn't want to him, but we all understand that the Department of Environmental Services is budgeting with public money or with private money. In other words, you pay a fine so that they can make it <coughs> right. There's no, I don't think there's a state budget for that department anymore. They're doing it all. They're also the overwhelmed. Yeah, well, the, another issue where you can't operate a state you know, with 19th century principles in the 21st century, it just doesn't work. It's like DCYF. Yeah. Anyway, anything else? No. 
going to voice my other complaint. Should I, should I submit those to CIP or just let them lie for now until you meet with them on Wednesday? I, is there any realistic way that those bridge do. projects will be contemplated within the next 10 years? What was the date I said? 2031. So now I'm the point. 2031 was the no state. There's no way that we can estimate the balance of the cost. I, I mean, I'm not ready to put a number on 2030. Well, if they said in seven years, well, at least put it seven years out, yep. and it's a placeholder. We can always add it in, you know, next year if we can get some sort of legislative. Yeah. yeah. Last question I have regarding those things is uh, HEB um, asked if they said they had offered before to help with Federal Corner Road or any other projects, and they also mentioned they could put landfill monitoring out to bid. Um, I know at the last meeting you folks had mentioned Clay and I, but I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not sure that we're both either one of us comfortable with that. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I suppose just putting out to bid, sure, and have you folks to be with. I, I had a know. conversation with Clay, and he would yeah. like to be heard on that, so we were all on the same way. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think either one of them are qualified to actually put that yeah. bid out. That's what I mean, that's I guess. So I that's what we thought H E B might be. Yeah. And Okay. Perfect. None of us here are qualified to award the right. bid. I don't think, right. without some kind of engineering review outside of the bidder. Correct. So maybe we need to look at H E B. Well, ask them for a quote or something. I would. I, I, I'm not sure how this works with respect to closed landfill monitoring, but the agency that requires the reports. Ought to be able to tell us who in the state is qualified to to do the right. work. Right. Uh, That's true. Yeah, you know, in in Give other list. well, right. In, in other areas, uh, uh, contractors have to be certified to do certain kinds of work that are that are gonna. Right. Uh, no, if we hire this. if we hire furnace people or electricians, you know, they have to meet state. Licensing, so it's a little different though. But the right. point is, the state has said yes, you can legally do the work. Conceptually, there's a parallel. Yeah, I just think the state's going to come back and say, well, you know, put your thing out to bid, and when they bid, ask them if they're approved by the DES. I don't know if they're going to get into the selection business. Well, I'm not, I'm like you. I'm not asking them to make the selection for us, but I need to know. Yeah. Wait a minute. Who, where do we send the letter? Right. My brother and I can't submit a right. proposal. So, yeah. So. All right. Uh, Why don't we? We got to yeah, contact whoever it is at the state that this the, the landfill monitoring stuff goes to and see if we can get a, a list of con contractors, yeah, just uh, it. consultants, whatever. Yeah. We just send that, it. Uh, uh, <coughs> they can be considered for doing this work. Start there. I have a yeah, even if we just got a list yeah. right. so that we could reference it to right. whatever bids we get in. I mean, that we can make it as open-ended as that. We're not looking for them to promote any particular right. lab. Right. Just give us some ideas so we're not wasting our time on people that are qualified. I had a question for you. Will you be coming to a CIP meeting? Yes. Or and then so to, no, I hope she'll put us on first because I got another meeting to go to. We have to notice that. It is noticed. I did, yeah. 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 So I don't. Yeah. Super. If, if you would, if you would ask Jill to put us first on her agenda, can you send her a uh, That would be great because uh, I do have another commitment that evening, and uh, I'd like to make both of them. Last question I think I have for you is, do you have any interest with HEB for other projects, Lynch Hill Road or, or excuse me, not Lynch Hill, Federal Corner, I think, it might have been mentioned in the past? That's what his email said. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind having him come down and visit, I mean, chat up Lynch Hill. I mean, I'd rather, if we're going to put a war article together for special road projects, I think we need to have them a little bit engineered. Yes. And, and I worked with them on Lang Pond Road, and I found them to be very yeah. uh, professional and good to work with. And no, that started out as a four hundred eighty-five thousand dollar project. They estimated one sixty, and it came in at one forty-seven. So the process worked. Well, and they'll catch up with things that you don't think about. Mm -hmm. You're not yes, part of. 
Okay. Anything else? No, okay. my, my only complaint. <laughs> and I'm going to voice it to my brother, Mr. Markison. <laughs> I don't know how it is that the applicant for something at the planning board is not notified of a hearing. I, it just is beyond me how that would happen. So that's why you went through last night? I have no, no notification at all. Huh. In fact, I paid for postage, certified mail postage, right. for a letter to me. And you didn't get it? No, I never got anything. Well, I want my postage money. We have, an, we have an ongoing issue with that post office. Uh, I, I, uh, uh, I don't know if anybody got it. Because. Yes, well, I, I do know another butter got it, and it was like way, way, way late. It's like way after it was mailed. But this post office down here is just, you know, they kind of do stuff when they get, when they feel like doing it. So, I, you never got your notes. I've never, I've got nothing. Yeah. Because I would have been there. I was sitting at home watching television. I didn't need to be doing that. I mean, I, I've been sort of waiting for the hearing because I yep. knew you guys were busy with Farm Island, et cetera. But, and I know that Lakes Region Conservation is looking for some resolution to this. It doesn't seem to be a major problem. No, it shouldn't Giving be. Giving land back to nope. the same guy that had it before. Yeah, no, it shouldn't be. So, so. If, I mean, I'll, I'll go down to the post office and ask if they've got a letter waiting for me there. But I was never, gonna, and I go in there every day for them. Yeah. Know, they never want it. If I had a registered letter, I'm sure they would have found it. I would think so. But I do know that you're not the only person that's had mail issues down there. Uh, so, uh, well, okay. I, and I don't have a problem blaming the post office. But some other form of notification, I mean, something. All right, I'm done. Are we done? Adjourn us. So okay, I'm going to adjourn this meeting. I'm done. Yeah. Ten thirty. Yeah. Checks are signed. Yep. Good to go. I'm going to leave this highway crowded.